know I'm in New York. She's flying out the whistleblower from D.C. I got a secret meeting with her. 21 years, former lead counsel for the World Bank. She turned whistleblower, attorney Karen Hudes. It was just in time. The banksters were falling and in high ranks. And with Karen's help, it seemed like the dots were really connecting. Okay, so uh, Karen, uh, we're here with Karen Hudes. Hudes, am I saying that right? Yes, that's K perfect. Karen Hudes, could you give uh, the audience a little background on yourself? Yes, I'm a lawyer and an economist, and I worked in the legal department of the World Bank for 20 years. I did what a lawyer inside a bank is supposed to do, which is when the financial information was getting fiddled, I reported it up the corporate ladder. I went to the audit committee when that didn't work. I went to the U.S. Treasury Department. When that didn't work, I went to the U.S. Congress. When that didn't work, I went to Ben Bernanke. When that didn't work, I went I to the rest that name. of the world. I know that name. I've heard that name. Yeah. And when that didn't work, I went to the rest of the world. And that's where we are now. We're with the rest of the world. What's the story going around the internet that um, one of our states, the United States, was to be nuked. Tell me, have you heard anything about this? Dave, I'm so glad you asked me that because everybody has to know about our two heroes. There's Ma Major General Michael Carey. He's commander of the 20th Air Force, or was, and also Vice Admiral Tim Giardina. These two patriots protected the citizenry. They pre prevented this nuclear device from going off over Charleston, South Carolina. Instead, it went off 600 miles off the coast. And you can tell from the seismograph records, or for that matter, the cables, the military cables that were intercepted by the Russians. They were planning on creating a false flag event so that they could grab power. That's what they wanted. They wanted us to kiss our republic goodbye. Forget it. Martial law, and they take over all property, which is your home, which is everything. And uh, yeah. I think we want to cover who these culprits are. Okay. All right? It's true. The Rothschilds are involved, but they're by far not the most important players. You've got King Juan Carlos. He's the head of the Farnese Continuum, three in one. He's a high-level knight of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Sacred Military Constantinian Order of St. George, and he's a knight of Malta, all rolled into one. And then don't forget the Prince of Naples, Vittorio Emmanuel IV. He tries to claim the title of King of Jerusalem. Um, then, of course, you've got to uh, mention the Palavincinis. And don't forget um, Prince Bernard of Litte Biesterfeld. And he's married to Beatrix Wilhelmina Armgart, Princess von Oranje Nassau. So there are a lot of players here, and uh, they thought nobody would find out about them, and they thought they would continue the same kind of uh, shenanigans that they've been pulling for centuries. They didn't count on the fact that humanity was onto them, and their game is up. All the whistleblowers in the world are pooling their resources, trying to sort out what's going on. And so one of the whistleblowers is um, uh, uh, Michael O'Bannon, he's um, with a retired military officer, I believe, with the Marines. He wrote a book, and he said that there were uh, two ways for the Jesuits to win. One was for them to remain secret. Guess what? They're not secret anymore. And the other way was for the U.S. military to support the Jesuits. Well, he wrote that the U.S. military, the Russian military, and the Chinese military are all working together, and they are bound and determined that we're not going to have a bankster's World War III this time around. Humanity is right on target to take back our world.